morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We're running into a few minutes over, but nevertheless, we're going to move on and go on and get started. So get Mr. Bonnets and tell him to get back over here because I'm going to make that announcement and it's for a reason. I'm not fussing, but I'm just making a point. Uh, let's, let me get started. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, remember me. When I'm praying, Lord, do Lord, remember me. When I'm praying, Lord, Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, do Lord, remember me. When I'm in trouble, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, remember me. When I'm dying, Lord, do Lord, remember me. When I'm dying, Lord, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, do Lord, remember me. Oh, do Lord, remember me. When this earth world is on fire, do Lord, remember me. When this world is on fire, do Lord, remember me. Do Lord, oh, do Lord, remember me. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Ecclesiast 12. No, ecl ecclesiastics. Okay. <laughs> I could that's just, I'm right. sorry. That's all right. No, we are we are learning, okay? Yes. 12 verse 1. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? This morning, our kind Heavenly Father. Father, we come before your throne of grace this morning, saying, Lord, we thank you for remembering me and remembering me in my time of need. Father, we just thank you because you are a God who sits high and looks low. You are a just God and you are a righteous God. You are sovereign who has no beginning and no ending. You are Alpha and Omega. And Father, we thank you for just being God all by yourself. Then Father, we ask you just uh, continue to breathe on every one of us, uh, covering us with your love and filling our cups with your ever flowing grace. And thank you for your mercy that suits every case that we find ourselves in. And Father, we thank you in advance for answering this prayer as we are praying it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good, morning. Good morning. The reading of the um, church covenant. Having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of the church, in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, 
to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly. Wait a minute, lost my place. Hold on one second. To walk mm -hmm. circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings, courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I uh, go into uh, our altar prayer, this is our time. I, I really want to tell the, the church, the congregation that uh, since this church's in, in, inception, uh, since the beginning, we have been, uh, we still are, a member of METSI, which is the right name for it is Metropolitan District Baptist Congress of Christian Education. That's our district association and part of the Wolverine State Congress of Christian Education. And it's national, which is National Baptist Congress of Christian Education. Well, um, I have been, the church has been paying its registration dues. And on Friday of this, well, yeah, Friday, uh, the church paid its dues for this year. That means we paid for the parent body registration and the METSI classes. Those are Christian education classes that as long as this church is part of and their membership dues is paid up, the classes that is offered uh, is at no cost to you. And I encourage you to take them, to take advantage of them. You don't have to go to the physical building because they're offering them in hybrid, which is online and in person. Now, if all you have to say is that is this, I want to go, I would like to attend, and um, I will send you the list of classes because this classes for starting in September has already begun. And I didn't say anything because previously has nobody been going other than myself. And I would like for you all to participate some. And you might can't take all of the classes, but you can take one uh, or take one a class. You might can't go every session. And the next session will start in January. As soon as I get the list of classes, I will email it to all of you. It has everything you need to know, the registration and everything. So why do you ask the question, why do I need to take Christian education classes? Well, it's helping your biblical growth and your Christian walk with Christ. Now, when I got involved back in 1991, is I have had already just started been teaching, but I had a desire to learn more about Christ. And I was blessed enough to sit under some powerful, truthful, spirit-filled teachers. So why am I saying? Because I am concerned. I want this church to grow spiritually. And I'm doing my best to do all of the teachings because there's mission on Mondays, Bible study on Tuesday nights, and of course, this service, Sunday school and um, worship service. Now, there are Sunday school books, but somebody, everybody, somebody has to pay for this because on Friday, uh, the church issued a check for $775. 
where the money came from somewhere. And uh, we are uh, high tides, my business tides, and yet I have donors from other places who make donations into the church. And I'm offering and giving classes when I teach on Bible study that is going is helpful uh, to your spiritual growth. And I'm going to say this, I'm leading as God leads me I, so that that you you the, the congregation will grow spiritually, numerically, and financially, period. Okay, just that way. And and I'm I'm not fussing at all. I'm just saying of what is being offered and what the church is doing. And yes, we have some members from over in Africa, and I don't say this uh lightly or any other way, but the fact that they there's a time difference. But they managed to get on, okay. That you can't, I you can't see them, but I they are here and they let me know. And uh, for our Bible study classes, I'm giving certificates, the church edition certificates of completion to all who complete the classes. You can miss one or two classes and still get a certificate, but uh, uh, there is a certificate. To let you saying to you, you have accomplished something in your study, okay? And um, the one, the new members class, I had two to complete the course. And that's a mandatory class because if you're a member of the church, you need to have a church's handbook and you need to know what your responsibilities are. Okay, now that being said, it is, I'm through with it. Uh, it's time for us to go to the Lord in prayer because we have so much to pray for. Every time you turn on the news, that's some kind of adversity. That's hate being dis on display, harming one another. Uh, that's not godly. So shall we? Just talk to the Lord for a moment in prayer. This morning, our Heavenly Father, our God who sits high and looks low, Father, we come before your throne of grace this morning. We are coming make an intercessory prayer because the needs are great. Father, we need your divine intervention on so many fronts. We need your touch on so many fronts. And Father, we know if we have a touch from you, things will get better. Father, there's sickness of all kind that needs your touch. And Father, you are the doctor. You are the bomb in Gilead. And we're asking for your touch this morning for all of those who are sick among us, whether I know them or have heard of them or not. But the good thing is that all are your people. You are we all humanity are your created being. And you love us all the same. And you being an unchangeable God, but who for one, what you done for the other. Just as you healed in the Bible days, and just as you're healing in our time. Father, we asking for your healing touch for all those who are sick among us. Then, Father, we're asking for your comfort and touch. Father, there is a restoration of our peace if in your touch. There's a, a calmness and our anxiety in your touch. There's love in your touch, Father, and we just need a touch from you. And, Father God, we're asking for a touch for the heal this nation. Father, we asking you to touch the hearts and the minds of those evil ones who have purposed in their hearts to bring some kind of harm or destruction on fellow, our fellow man, on their fellow man. And Father, if you touch those hearts, there will be a spiritual reawakening because when you touch, you remove that evil heart 
and replace it with one of love and kindness and gentleness and peace. And then Father, we ask you to touch the hearts and the minds of your people who are called by your name. Father, as we come to you in prayer, make an intercessory prayer. And if we are your people, we will exhibit your love and your peace and your long suffering with our fellow man. Father, we need just the spiritual reawakening. And Father, when you touch the hearts of man, there is gonna be a change. And Father, we thank you for your touch this morning. And Father, we just thank you for your touch of protection. We need your protection one way and some form or the other in this country, in this nation, and in this city and state. Then we need your hand of protection of your people around the world. And Father, we know that Demonic spirits are rising through different governments that they are purposely harming your people who are standing firm in their faith, calling on, calling out sin. And they are standing on the word, your word, which is true. As they walk and talk, and tell a dying world about a risen Savior, who is your son, Jesus. Father, they need your protection, and I'm asking for your protection on them this morning. Then, Father, we, I'm asking that all the churches that is open in your name, Father, they will preach and teach the unmitigated truth of your word. And, Father, we're asking you continue to breathe on this church. As you grow it financially, spiritually, and numerically, and all those who tune in from other countries, Father, we thank you for them. And that there's something be said that they will continue to grow. We all will from this, from the message, because it's your word. Then, Father, we're asking you to just continue to crown my head with wisdom and knowledge, continue to touch each and all of us individually that we will grow in the grace, your love and your knowledge. And Father, we thank you in advance for answering this prayer. Lord, I'm praying it in the authoritative name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, today's message is teaching for remembrance. Teach to remember. And I'm coming out of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter six, and we go through verses five through 12. And it reads as follows And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commend thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest down in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and upon thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto their fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities when th which thou build not, and the houses full of all good things, which thou fullest not, and with their wells dig, which they dig not, Vineyard, vineyards, and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Israel, Egypt, for the, uh, from the house of bondage, the word of God for the people of God. 
Let me kind of set the tone for today's message. That it is set in the last few days of Moses' tenure for leading the nation of Israel. And he was reiterating God's laws to this current generation of Israel, just as he had taught their forefathers. The older generation had died in the wilderness for their unfaithfulness or uh, their faith failure to obey God's law. So God, Moses being a godly fatherly figure uh, was making sure that this new generation knew what God required of them, which was their obedience to his holy laws. Just as God requires the same of you and I today. So therefore, we constantly are to teach each generation, and there's no excuse but knowing what God requires, because we have his holy scriptures, which is teaching us. He has we have leaders, just as we had during the Bible days, and Moses was the nation of Israel's only leader until they was going into the land of Canaan. So I want to make three points here. The importance of teaching each generation, the importance of each generation to remember what they had been taught to them. And the third point is a blessing from remembering who God is and always remembering your history. So then, I'm trying not to be too long, but I'm trying to get this point across because I have some points within the first point. If the question was raised, what am I to teach? Verse five said this, we shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Listen, we are to teach our children at an early age to love God with their told being and giving them firsthand knowledge that yes, there is a God and we must reverence him. We reverence him by respecting him for who he is and his awesome power. And through reverencing God, we are acknowledging him that yes, he does it this. So, so many does not believe that he is, he, there is a God. They think that somebody got us here some other way. And some folks have been teaching evolution. I can tell you, I can't see. And they kept proving it to me in the history books that all our bodies evolved from a one cell plant. Okay. Now, we also reverence him by obeying his command and living in obedience to as he told us that is spelled out in our Ten Commandments. And I won't take the time to read the Ten Commandments, but they are spelled out in Exodus, the 20th chapter, and you can start reading all the way through to the 20th. Okay? So, the first commandments of this is thou are supposed to have no other gods before him. And as we spelled out in our Sunday school lesson, that so many times we have taken God out of first place in our lives because he's blessed us so much. And we forget that it is we are blessed because of God's love. And when we and loving God and obeying that first commandment of loving God with that whole being, we are establishing a vertical relationship with the Almighty God. He wants that intimate relationship with his prized creation. Remember this humanity is the only creation of God's creative activity where he put part of himself into us. He breathed the breath of life into humanity. Okay. My second point under the first point of what must we teach 
is that God commanded us to love him. He didn't, it was, the, t loving him was our told being is not an option. That was a command. And when we fail to love God as he's commanded us, then we are placed in something else or someone, whatever it is, and God's place in our life that angers him. And let me say this to you. He won't take back his first place in our life. And nothing or no one is gone can rightfully take God's place in our life. And I'll reiterate this. Look at who we are and what he done for us. We are a living human being because God put his breath into us and we became a living soul. He created us three portions in one. He gave us a mind, a soul, and a body to carry out our, our spirit. God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, lives in every one of us, I believe. So given that what he's done for us, we must, or we should, or we are strongly encouraged to make him first in our lives. He's first in our lives, or should be, because he is Alpha and Omega. It is he who has no beginning or end. He's all powerful, he's everywhere, and he knows all. He is the one person that we can go to when every, and out of every situation and get the truth or and get delivered from out of our adverse situation. He is the one person who we can go to in a time of need and pray and be sure to get an answer. Every one of us today can call on God and we will never get a busy signal. God's line is always open, okay? We don't have to use technology. He established his technology before technology was ever discovered. So therefore, we can, yes, we have a straight line to God Almighty to take him to our problem and just simply thank him for what he's done, is doing in our lives. Let me say this. We thank him because, and we teach our young people to always be grateful for what he's done. Because not only has he supplied their needs, but he supplies all of our needs. And he said so that he would do that he, according to his riches through his son, Jesus Christ. He has kept that promise. And every promise that God has made, he has kept it. So we must be obedient to live according to him and be thankful that he is an unchanging God. And we start teaching our young people at an early age, we must teach them from an early, early age that it is God who created heaven and earth. Then in teaching God, our young people that, that to reverence God and have a respect for mankind, that it takes in those first two commandments of loving the Lord that God with all that heart, and the second one is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are the two most powerful commands that God has issued us that we are compelled and strongly encouraged to live by. Okay. Now, in addition to the parents teaching that children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, we have the Holy Bible for us to live by, to read, and to know what God requires of us. In addition to having leaders or godly leaders who are still teaching us, so we have no excuse for not knowing, first knowing God himself, and not knowing what he requires of us. Let me say this one thing. God showed his love for us, not only when he created us, but him being all-knowing knew 
that we, we, humanity, was going to disobey his command. One is he disobeyed by not an incent. Wait, let me rephrase it. He knew that humanity was going to disobey him. And he did that. Eve and Adam in the garden when he told them not to eat of the forbidden fruit. And they did it anyway, listening to Satan. That in a sin entered the world. But he loved us so much that he gave his very best. And who was his best? Jesus Christ, who went to the cross and atoned our sin. He took on our sin, which he knew no sin, so that we would have a restored relationship with God and have the ability to content to love God with our told being and love our fellow man as I said. Let me say this to you. Christ, God done what he done out of love. Jesus Christ done what he done out of love. So why can't you and I reciprocate that love to God and love him with our told being? We have to, and I'm still talking about teaching our children. And we have to teach them about love, teach them about God, and teach them to obey his commandments. And then we find all of his commandments and the scripture that I read and in the 20, 10 commandments out of Exodus 20. And these two commandments was commanded. And they all of them were. And I don't want you to miss that. Oh, he gave some, didn't give the other. He gave all of them. And he gave them for our benefits. Because if we don't love God, how can we love one another? And if we love one another and don't love God, that's a misconnect thing. Okay, I want to make another point as I keep on talking about uh, teaching. When my third point into point one is to begin talk godliness. Let me rephrase it. Once we begin to teach our young people at an early age, it becomes part of their DNA. It becomes part of their daily thinking, their lives, and everything. Listen, loving God is being part of our nature. We build that horizontal relationship of loving one another, as this is the second commandment, as I stated earlier. And having a horizontal relationship with our fellow man, we will begin to treat others or our fellow man as we want to be treated. We cannot love God and love our fellow man and then deliberately seek to harm our fellow man. To deliberately seek to mistreat our fellow man or hate our fellow man. No, sure, we may not like everything that they do, but you don't dislike or hate the person you hate this the wrongdoing that they are doing. That's a fine line, but we walk it every day with the help of God. Another point that I want to make in point one now of what I'm to teach, uh, what a frequency in which I'm to teach them. Let me reiterate or go back to verse seven through nine that tells us that we must teach our children daily when we going in and coming out, writing them on the doorpost of their heart so that will become part of our DNA. They can't become part of our DNA if we don't teach. And we have to teach early, early in our lives, okay? And our morning, there's nothing wrong with having a morning prayer time with God. And we teach our young people to say, thank you, God, for another day. What's wrong with that? And I'll say this and I'll say it again. How can you wake up if God had, done, had not put his internal lung clock in every one of us? The people will tell me, because I've had one tell me just the last Sunday, my lung clock. Okay, fine. You work. You, but God's alarm, uh, internal alarm clock calls you to hear that external alarm clock. 
And I've said this many times, and it's worth me repeating because I'm trying to make a point here. If you put that alarm clock out in one lung, a Mount Olivet, or whatever cemetery you choose, and see how many of them dead folk get up when it goes off. Not a one. And the point that I'm trying to make here is when we love God, and God has loved us so much, he provides for all of our needs. And when he has his internal alarm clock in us, and each morning he wakes us up, he enables us, and I'm saying it a different way, to hear that external alarm clock. When we have that intimate relationship with God, many of us don't use an external alarm clock. We depend on God and his internal alarm clock to wake us up. And we experience his grace every single day of our lives. From the moment we come into this world to the very next day. And if we live to be 80, 90, 100, whatever age it is, we can thank God for his all-sufficient grace and mercy. Because he covers us with his grace. And whatever situation, if there is no adversity, his mercy suits every case. And that is, he gave us what we did not deserve. Hmm. Let me continue talking about us teaching and the frequency of us teaching. It's a good practice to start teaching our children morning and give them a Bible verse to learn each day. Have them repeat that verse before meal. You are indoctrinating them and having the, the word of God becomes part of their DNA because I can rest assure you that this world will infiltrate them with a negative DNA. And you do not want your child to be consumed and by the wickedness of this world. And the point, the overall point that I'm trying to get over is that teaching our children is critical to their well being. And I'm going to get to the next part in a minute. My second point. The importance of teaching every generation and for them to remember what they've been taught. Because listen to me this way it's important that our children, so they will have God's holy laws written in their hearts. That's the doorpost. And as they, it will become part of their DNA. So when we can teach them, Early in the morning, teach them by scripture, sit down and have some biblical Bible training time for our young people. And you want to fill them with the Bible and scripture, God's word, because you are building them on a solid foundation. Look at it this way, that when, uh, as a man in the house, when a man, when a house is built from the ground up on cement, that's solid. And when storm, the hurricanes of what come, it is, it is bound to uh, withstand, as opposed to just a house on non-solid foundation. And now spiritual thing is the solid foundation is on God and his love. And a nun, the sin built house is a life that is built not on God. And there is gonna come troubles in their lives. And if they have that solid found biblical foundation, they will be able to withstand the hurricanes and the storm that's gonna come in their days. And this, let me, go to scripture and the importance for us to teach just our children 
scripture, Proverbs 22 and 6 tells us to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it because it had become part of their DNA. And let me say this to you very nicely. Yes, in times, because we are living in a fallen world and you have taught your children and give them that foundation. And every once in a while, they might stray from their teaching, but if it's ingrained in them, they will return to what they have been taught. But if they have not been taught and don't have that foundation, they will be lost. Do we want that for our children? Do we want that? Now, let me get to tell us uh, what another scripture uh, requires. And that's Deuteronomy 8 and 2 tells us, And you, our children, shall remember the whole way of the Lord, your God, that has led thee, and he's talking about the nation of Israel, 40 years in the wilderness. And let me say this. Let me say that they might be humble, testing you to know what's in your heart and where you will keep their command. And here I'm trying to reinforce the point, the importance of us teaching our children and the importance of them remembering what they have been taught. And I'll say this once again. The world is no friend to our children. And if you look around, how many of them is being destroyed daily? Can we say that our teaching our children has stopped somewhere with my generation? What is it? But we got to get back to wherever it started and start teaching our young people teaching them the ways of the Lord and the importance of them to walk in the Lord's way because they are going to have some Red Sea days. They are going to have some wilderness journeys. They are going to have some storms that come in their lives and their very foundation is going to be shaken. I didn't say destroyed, I said shaken because of the world and its wickedness. We in our own strength are no match for the God of this world, but in God's strength, we are more than conquerors in this world because God and his all knowing has dressed us for the fight that we're gonna fight. And you can read that in uh, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and start reading at verse 11 and go to 18. You'll see how he dressed us and he gave us our soul and that is his word, the Holy Bible. Okay, let me continue to look at uh, the importance of that. Young people remember. It's important for them to remember because in this world, they're gonna intermingle with folks who maybe is not as Christian or is not at the same level of their Christian walk as they are. And we will be strong enough not to be, they will be strong enough not to succumb to that waywardness or that ungodliness, okay? And, We will have, they will have the protective armor of God all around. Okay. And another point I want to make and the importance of them remembering is that when these adversities come upon them or when their faith is shaken, they will remember the Lord God's name and they will call on him in faith and believing him for their deliverance out of this temptation or the adversity that they are encountering. And in Psalms 119, 55 tells us that, that yes, when we get, when we have taught our children and they're knowing that they're gonna 
encounter some adversities, they will remember who God is and what he is to them. And they will call on him for their deliverance. That's important for our young people. And they will also remember that you can't always settle a score with a gun. And I have to tell some, these are other Christian ministers, that I can fight any battle on my knees. Prayer changes things. And when we go to God in faith, believing in what we ask God for, we are sure of his answer. Listen. It is a blessing for us, our children and their children to know God for ourselves and to have that kind of relationship with him that we can call him anytime. And when we're in that adverse situation, be assured of the fact that we will get an answer and he will deliver us. And it's also good and blessing for them to know God and talk to him and just say, thank you, God, for all that you have done and all that you will do. And I'm saying this to say this, that it is just good for all of us to pray and thank God sometimes. Because, yeah, we're going to go to him and ask him for stuff. Yes, we are, because of the city, the life, the society in which we live, because it's fallen. It will get right when God restore his peace, his perfect peace. And, but in the meantime, we have a God that loves us so much that he will not leave us defenseless in this fallen world. We have a God that loves us so much that he put his spirit, the Holy Spirit in every one of us to come to our rescue and he will bring back to our remembers or to the children remembers what have been taught to them and will comfort them in the process. And I'm almost finished. And I'm gonna close but my third point from what I told you a few minutes ago, the blessings from remembering who God is and our history. Verse 11 tells us the blessing that God will bestow on us for those who obey, obey his holy laws and live accordingly. I want to ask a question. How can we obey God's laws and live outside of God's laws? It's almost impossible to do because there is no obedience there. And I'm, I'll venture to say that somewhere the love, true love for God and the thanksgiving or gratitude or expression of gratitude for what he has done for us and live outside of his laws. That's a disconnect. Then when we, it is a blessing for our children to be taught their history and their heritage of where we come from. And I know I said this in Sunday school, we must never be ashamed of our heritage because it's there to teach us something and to learn and grow from it. So just like the nation of Israel, Israel, they were to always remember where they came from and they were God's chosen people. And we as believers, Living in the grace, we are part of God's chosen people. And we must always, let me rephrase it, I encourage all of us to live with an expression of thanksgiving in our heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish 
but have everlasting life. That means that I, you, and all believers, no matter what nationality you are, what your social status is, or will be, have that same right you have that's been assured of eternal life in the presence of God only if you believe in him. That's a blessing. That is an act of love. That's a the demonstration of love, or however you want to phrase it, that cannot, no man can match. And for that alone, regardless of whatever else, the knowing that God gave his best so that I had. He get, make it personal. He gave it for me so that I will have eternal life. But in order to get his free gift of salvation, I have to accept his son, Jesus. We do that through faith. Okay. Those are some of the blessings of being taught. First there is a God. He loved us so much. He created us in his image and likeness. He put him part of himself in us. Then not only that, he gave his very best to restore a broken relationship because sin in, uh, entered the world through one man. It exit through Jesus Christ. Yes, we have that is blessings. And we have to teach our children. And we have to start early in life. We can't wait till they get teenagers because they have already been shaped and molded at that time point in time. Listen, that is unimaginable blessings in teaching our children so they will grow to love God. And that process will extend to their children and their children and their children. But now if we forget or fail to teach our children, they are going to fall prey to ungodliness and be lost. We as parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents do not want to see that. God doesn't want to see that. He is his desire, his perfect will, is that all be lost. But in his permissive will, he knows that some is going to reject his son Jesus and be lost. But we still have that up there. Every humanity on the faith of the earth has that same opportunity to accept his gift of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So, and as I, I'm closed with this, I'm through now. So don't forget, God is our creator and, our, and sustainer. Jesus Christ is our savior and God the Holy Spirit is our key. Those are some important facts for us to teach our children. And this point, uh, open the doors of the church. And if you're here and want to join this branch of Zion, and me personally, I have nothing else to teach but the unmitigated truth of God's word. We're going to love on you. We're going to take care of you and, and provide for you as biblically as the best that I know how. And if you want to join later, go to our website, theshepherdministries.org, and click membership. Complete the form and send it back to as direct. Okay. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you this morning for the message. And Father God, I pray that all who hears will continue to teach their children, their grandchildren, great-grandchildren, the truth of your word, and begin by teaching them that, yes, God, you do exist. You are sovereign. You're all-knowing. You're all-powerful, and you're everywhere. And teach them that we are to have no other God before you. And Father, teach them, teach them to love one another. 
as you loved us all. And Father God, we just thank you so much in advance for answering this prayer. As we pray it in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. So we are closing with our song. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen. This concludes.